sure. So, so Dan, you went to Mexico. Uh, where yeah. exactly did you go in Mexico? And I understand you also spent some time there uh, writing a book. So tell us a little bit about that experience and how long you were there. I flew to Mexico City, uh, which was the, the main entry point to Mexico. Was there for a few days, uh, had booked a hostel, a private room in a hostel. I, I expected it to be like empty when I got there. It was surprisingly, it was quite busy. There were actually people there, you know, drinking and hanging out and. Uh, gotta love Mexico. <laughs> gotta love Mexico. But for the first couple of days, like I, I mostly, I was just, uh, you know, again, I hadn't flown in a year. I wanted to not, you know, bring a new virus into Mexico. So I just kind of did my own thing and I wasn't trying to socialize or anything at least until I knew I had made it and I was healthy, you know? Um, but after that, I, I took a bus to a place called Tepotzlan. And Tepotzlan is a Pueblo Magico about, about two hours from Mexico City. Uh, beautiful copper mountains all around the town. Yeah. And there's like a old ruin you can climb up to. Uh, that was closed due to the, the virus, yeah. um, and which is interesting because it's, it's just like a public place to go hiking. So, uh, so you were in that town? Like I was you... actually staying. I had booked. Uh, I booked my own home in a place in the hills outside the town, so in, in the greater area. But I went down there not really trying to make travel videos or do anything other than work on this book I was writing. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that for a little bit I was just consuming too much news media. I was, you know, I was I was pretty bummed out about the the state of travel. And, you know, 2020 had been the worst year of my life. And I just decided I don't really want this to be the story of 2020. I want to reclaim this year for myself and I want to change it into something else. And what I decided to do was I'm going to write a book. I'd always wanted to write. As I mentioned, I mean, I studied writing as a student. I'd, I'd had a blog for a while, but I'd never given it my full go. And I'd never really had anything to write about that passionately. But now I did. I'd, I'd experienced, I'd lived in Mexico for a year. I'd experienced the travel life. And I wanted to write a book about traveling and in particular about Mexico. So I was at home in Montreal. I was locked down. Everything, all the restaurants, everything's closed. It's, it's minus 20 degrees outside, you know. So I just started writing this book and I put all my energy into this book. And it started going pretty well. But I, as the months went on, I felt like, I was losing my track and I needed a spark and it just became so obvious suddenly, like, why don't I go to Mexico? The border is open. I can fly down there. I don't need to be at a resort in Cancun or something. In fact, I don't, I shouldn't be, I should be going to the Mexico. I know, which is the Mexico, which is a bit more off the beaten path, a bit more local and just find somewhere where, I'm close to a town where like if, if all the COVID cases are good, I can go, I can eat, I can hang out, I can drink, I can have fun. But if the COVID situation starts to get bad, it, like, listen, I'm, I'm in nature. I got my own spot. I just got my groceries. I'll hang out. I'll work on my book. That, that was the thought process. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Uh, and your book, was, your book is, is about your experience in Mexico too, right? It's, it's about my experience in Mexico. It's it's actually gone through a big journey. It started out as being, you know, rather autobiography, bit of an autobiography, just about my journey, why, you know, what got me started in the travel path, how I moved to Mexico, and then how my perception of Mexico changed through living there. But, you know, I eventually came to the conclusion that this might be really interesting to some of my viewers who've been following me for a long time. But I want to tell a story that's bigger than that. I want to reach people who have no idea who Dan and no idea who the new travel is. I want to tell like a really nice story about the travel experience. It'll be told in Mexico, but really I want to show people like what travel means when you get away from the resorts and you get away from the luxury a bit and you get to know like real people and you get to know real experiences. Because uh, that's, that's where the love of travel came for me going all the way back to that first trip we did through Guatemala, where we saw a lot of, a lot of local places. And um, now it's a book 
now it's a novel actually there's characters there's a story arc there's uh it's it's evolved into something where so it's Dan, a the new travel isn't there anymore yeah it's 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 a fiction which is based on various points of my time in mexico so people who know me will recognize things i did from videos and experiences i had but it's 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 in another story entirely at this point so um <laughs> well, it's, that's it's been a journey, man. I've restarted this whole book a couple times, which is why it's taking much longer than I thought it would be. But I'm really happy with the the, the direction it's currently on. Well, that's a really neat uh, way to take it. You know, it's funny. Um, we had on this podcast uh, my friend Josh Simmons. Um, okay, and he is an, a fiction writer, but he that's not that wasn't his day job. He was a lawyer. He worked for a boutique law firm in DC. Oh, wow. He then started just writing, um, like get up at five in the morning. You know, he's married, he's got a couple kids, uh, and he would just get up at five in the morning and just start writing. But he was it, he used some of the real life experiences he had uh, for some of the books. Now he's put out like six or seven yeah. fiction works now. Now a few years ago, when we had him on the podcast, he actually had just left um, his day job to be a full time fiction writer. Um, and that was on episode 52 of, uh, of the podcast. Oh, I'll have to check it out. That's yeah. something, huh? Josh had actually, since I taught, since I had him on the podcast, actually got a stint with the state department, U S state department for about, I think maybe two years. Um, and now he's moving back into the, the law firm life, but back into the writing life. But he was telling me, Oh, it was good to be back, you know, in like a real job doing, <laughs> you know, getting, acquiring content in a sense that he can apply to his fiction works. But anyway, uh, Dan, but that's kind of interesting. The evolution of taking it from an autobiographical uh, nonfiction work to, to a fiction work. And, and yeah. Uh, and well, as, as your, as your friend said, you know, it's, it's fiction, but there is always parts of your life. And I think it's fiction will always have parts of your life because like a, a writer can only really write about what they know to some extent. And I mean, you can go totally like fantasy and totally sci-fi and you can, some people make up, you know, really crazy stories, but the human interaction, like deep underneath, there will always be something that they know, you know, maybe, you know, there's a, a character who reminds them of their brother or something or a friend they used to know, like the, the human experience you had is, is what you can put into stories, which other people can relate to. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. So and, and fiction, whether it's reading or writing, right, really builds the imagination. Um, yeah, it builds the imagination. And also it, it, I mean, you know, that's another part of me. I'm, I'm, I'm a book lover. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten into writing if I, if I wasn't. I, I think in some sense, the experience of traveling and the experience of reading a good book are very similar. You know, it takes mm -hmm. you to another world. It shows you people in a way you haven't seen before. First of all, I should say to everybody listening, the, I think it's the, the video that you have pinned right now at the top of your new travel YouTube channel. It really gives you, it was sort of the uh, why I went to Mexico. This is back in the fall. But right. I liked that you revisited in little quick clips um, a lot of the momentous travel experiences you've had over the years from uh, South Korea to Costa Rica to all these places and how it, like your journey evolved. And I thought that was kind of a cool little video for people uh, to watch, but you got away from your writing, right? And now you're returning to your writing. So I think, I think that's really great. Oh, th thank you. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just qu quickly add that. I think it's, it's something I'm learning the importance of now after doing this for five, six years, it's like, not everyone knows the journey you've been on because a lot of new people can arrive along the way. So part of the importance is not just making new content, but reflecting and really letting people know what your journey has been. Uh, because if they know where you've been, they can know where you're going. Whereas like, uh, I mean, even, even you at the podcast or any of your own, uh, you know, professional endeavors, it can really be valuable just to step back and be like, Hey, like, this is how I got started. This is the journey it's been on. This is what it's turning into. Um, valuable for other people and also valuable for yourself just to think about it. If I, if I didn't spend enough time thinking, like maybe it was the, the pandemic, which gave me the chance to stop and think and be like, okay, I was on this wild ride where YouTube turned into my career. I never thought this could happen. Now I'm here and now it all stopped. But 
is this where I even wanted to be? Like, did I even want to be a YouTuber or did I, did I fall into this through writing, which was always my first passion? And if that's the case, how can I make writing more of the, you know, more of the uh, ecosystem that I'm building here under the new travel? So yeah. in many ways, what I'm doing right now is a terrible choice financially, because instead of making videos, which make money, I'm spending like a year focused on this book, which uh, it has been delayed and delayed. But it's getting me back to the, the core idea of why I started. And that's, that's a powerful thing. Um, I saw that you wrote somewhere on one of your websites. Uh, you said, uh, despite all the numbers you get, despite all the, the fact that this has turned into a job for you, you said your deepest belief is that is there are good people all over the world and travel can bring us all together. And you added, my life's mission is to share this message. So I wanted to ask you if you could just... Um, embellish upon that a little bit. And do you still feel this as your life mission? Yes, I do. Uh, th and thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. It's, 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 it's one of the things that only uh, speaking, speaking of like taking a pause, you, you really do need to pause sometimes and ask yourself like what you really want to be doing because you get on this treadmill of a job and, and then suddenly something is working, but is it working for other people or is it working for you or like what, what's actually going on here? So I always try to remind myself why I actually started wanting to travel or make videos or write posts in the first place. And it goes back to that belief that travel is a force for good and travel will always be a force for good. 